Welcome everyone to another episode of Tez Talks Live. I'm your host, William McKenzie of Tezos Commons. And today we have our other co-host, Kenneth Garofalo and Andreas Gassman of Papers. Guys, how are you all doing? Uh, how's everyone's Thursday so far? Pretty good. Happy to be here. Amazing. Pretty hot, but uh, we're here. <laughs> we're here and we're doing it. <laughs> Cool. So guys, for the audience listening, we have a, another Ledger Nano S engraved with the Tezos logo uh, as a giveaway today. So make sure you guys listening, stay tuned to the very end. About 10 minutes before we wrap today's episode, I'll be dropping a keyword that you guys will enter in the YouTube chat and we'll have a Nightbot select one of you as an eligible winner for this Ledger Nano S. So again, make sure to stay tuned. Look for that keyword about 10 minutes left in the episode and then enter that keyword within the chat to be eligible for this giveaway. Thanks, Ken. Uh, so let's go ahead and kick things off. Um, Andy, would you mind discussing uh, to the audience a bit of info on your background? You know, how you first got into the blockchain space uh, and more? Yeah, I think my interest started about four years ago, um, a bit before the, the big rally in 2017. I got interested in the technology and what, uh, well, what, how it can basically change the world. And I slowly started getting familiar with Bitcoin and Ethereum. And then I just went from there also in the place that I work papers. Um, we did some projects in uh, those areas and then we started uh, working with other blockchains as well. And in the end, we ended up here with Tezos. Yeah. Really interesting. So you guys, the company itself is called Papers, but you have a main product, which is the AirGap wallet. And then you have some other products like the Tez Block, Block Explorer, and then the product that we're going to feature today, which is Beacon. Uh, so before we get into that product, how was it specifically, Andy, that you got into Tezos? I know you do some work with Papers with other blockchains, but what, what is it about Tezos that makes this ecosystem so unique and makes you want to contribute to Tezos? I mean, it, it all basically started when we started with uh, building our wallet, uh, which is at, at first was just Bitcoin and Ethereum. And then we reached out to a lot of blockchains asking for, for support uh, or for uh, well, help to integrate new blockchains. And Tezos was actually um, very interested and that's how we started. So basically integrating Tezos into AirGap. And then as we became more familiar with the project, um, we got to know the people behind it and uh, like all, also the people working on the tooling around it. And we just saw that the, it's a very mature ec ecosystem. I mean, it's still early days, but it's, uh, you, you could see that there is a lot of potential behind it. Yeah, we've heard similar feedback. It's really the, the overall decentralized community is what attracts a lot of these high quality developer teams that contribute to the project. So yeah. great to hear that. And I mean, one point is also geographically, we are based in Switzerland and uh, the Zug headquarters are in Zug. Uh, sorry, the Tezos headquarters are in Zug. Um, so we are also sometimes working out of their co-working space. So it's good to have direct contact with people from uh, yeah, the Tezos foundation. Very interesting. Um, Andy, could you give us a brief description of what Beacon is? Okay, so a beacon basically allows you to connect dApps, decentralized applications um, built on Tezos to connect to your wallet. Um, you are probably familiar with MetaMask or maybe Wallet Connect on Ethereum. Mm -hmm. So it's basically the same concept um, evolved a little bit into um, a direction we thought was uh, was improving the whole thing. And then, yeah, that's basically what, uh, what beacon is today. So... Uh, Beacon is, um, I mean, I have to mention Beacon is basically just a, an implementation, a reference implementation of a, a lower level standard on the Tezos uh, blockchain. So it's called uh, the TZIP10. It's a Tezos improvement protocol number 10 that specifies how this interaction um, should work. And we were, I would say we were the driving force behind it, but there were a lot of people, a lot of different projects involved in, in making this happen. And Beacon is basically just the name of the, the SDK that we released that implements the standard. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's great to note. And 
So Andy, why is Beacon so important to the Tezos developer or the Tezos end user? What makes this implementation so important? Yeah, I, I think it's very important for both actually, because I mean, the, the, if you are as a developer, if you're developing a dApp, what you want is you want people to actually use it. Like as many people, uh, you want that as many people as possible have access to your dApp. And as a user, you want to use your personal favorite wallet, may it be a browser wallet, uh, uh, a ledger, a mobile wallet, a desktop wallet, whatever, um, to interact with that app. So we basically saw this need that people would like to use their preferred wallet. Um, and that's what uh, why we integrated this into the core uh, of the TZIP10 proposal. So maybe... I mean, maybe I can quickly touch on that. So if you're familiar with MetaMask uh, on Ethereum, MetaMask is a br uh, browser extension. So most people actually have a, a main wallet. Let's say maybe it's the Ledger, maybe it's um, mobile wallet, desktop wallet, uh, but they would like to interact with, um, with decentralized apps on Ethereum. So what they do is they install MetaMask and they ki kind of create a second wallet and put some money on it. Uh, just to interact with uh, with decentralized applications. But that's actually not ideal or it's not what we believe the user actually wants. But it's just it was the only way of basically connecting a dApp to a mobile application. So we kind of um, worked on that and we made it the core that you can actually, out of the box, if you use the Beacon SDK, we detect if you have a Chrome extension installed, then we use we talk to the extension. But if you don't have one, we will automatically uh, try to initialize a connection with your mobile wallet. And this is usually done uh, via QR code, which we will see later in the demo. Oh, okay, yeah, exactly. Like we'll get into that demo later. We'll see exactly how to pair or uh, to link your your mo mobile wallet into uh, the D app, and we'll get into uh, yes. exactly where the use cases will will arrive from this as well. Yeah, and will. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, thanks for uh, getting into that. Um, real quick though, we actually already have a question from the audience. Uh, okay. Superboy asked, "I would be glad to know the difference between Beacon and Thanos Wallet." Well, it's actually not. Um... So Beacon is basically just the, the way of communicating between dApps and wallets. And one of uh, our Chrome extension, which is basically a reference implementation, and it um, allows you to use all the features that were defined in the standard, this is called Beacon extension. But the, the Beacon SDK doesn't only work with the Beacon extension. That is a very important point. It is actually a standard, and we hope that everybody will use this standard. I mean, if there is not really a downside if you use the Beacon SDK, but if you really want to, you could also do your own Im implementation, which is actually what Thanos Wallet did. So they took our standard, the TZIP10, uh, but because Beacon offers uh, a lot of things like the peer-to-peer the -peer communication that they didn't need, and it just uh, made their app a little bit bigger, so they decided to do their own implementation. But um, Thanos Wallet is actually comp compatible with all dApps that support Beacon. So we will, um, I mean, I didn't plan on showcasing this, um, but maybe we can take a quick look. If you have Thanos installed and you go to a dApp that has Beacon support, if you click the button, then Thanos will automatically uh, respond and you can use Thanos Wallet uh, to interact with the dApp as well. So basically to sum it up, uh, Beacon extension and Thanos Wallets are basically just two, two bra uh, extension wallets and you can choose either one and both work with the Beacon protocol. Thanks for summing that up. Um, another question for you is, do you, can you detail any um, brief examples of some potential use cases uh, within Beacon? Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, there is the obvious case, like if you are developing a, like a complex, um, contract or, or DAP, let's say a casino, mm -hmm. for example, where you can bet on something or, or, or do like more complex things, you can use Beacon to um, send the, the transaction that you prepare on in your DAP 
you can send it to your wallet and let the user sign it. Um, so that's like um, basically allowing you to just interact with the wallet in any kind of tap. But there are also simpler use cases, as we will see later on, uh, where you can just, for example, every baker that is out there, they could just add a small button um, that says delegate to us. And then the user can click it. There will be a QR code. They can scan it. And the, the delegation request will show up in the wallet. And you just have to click OK. And then you are delegated to that baker. Now the process is basically, hey, delegate to us. This is our address. And then you have to open your wallet. You have to go to the delegation screen, enter the address, or maybe there's a search functionality or whatever, and then you can delegate to the baker. So this would actually also help bakers a lot to um, make it easier for the user to delegate to them. Yeah, I think that's that's a huge benefit, simplifying the baking process, where currently a user has to go in, search for uh, the TZ address of the baker, copy that, and paste it under a, uh, a delegation function within a wallet, right? So you're mm -hmm. simplifying that. There's a button. They click the button. Their wallet's already linked uh, using the Beacon SDK, and then it appears on their wallet that's linked uh, to delegate to that baker. So it makes it exactly. easier to understand. So it should help onboard yeah. more users into the delegation and baking process. So yes. now the exciting part, we're going to go into a live demo. We're going to see how Beacon actually works, and it's going to be demoed with some live D apps that already exist within the Tezos network. So. Let's yes. get right into so, it. Let's hope everything works, because as we all know, demos are always a little tricky. So um, here we, we can see the, the landing page of our um, Beacon, oh, well, just our Beacon landing page. Uh, the interesting thing is that this landing page is actually a DAP itself. So I mean, there are it's not really a lot of useful stuff you can do, but it's just a way to showcase it. So let's first. Um, look at how it works if you download the extension. So we can go here, and then we can actually add it. So I'm, it's uh, currently compatible with Brave and with Chrome. I'm using Brave here. So let's see. OK, good. The extension is installed. So let's go back. OK, so when we open the extension for the first time, we have an option to pair it with our wallet. This we will touch on later on. Uh, we can also use a ledger. But we will, for now, choose the developer mode, which basically means that we will have a local uh, mnemonic here. So this is, uh, we specifically say that this should only be used by um, developers, because we also didn't really take uh, proper security measures to secure this mnemonic. Uh, if you really want to have your mnemonic, your main mnemonic in, a, in an extension, then you should definitely use Thanos, because they encrypt the secret when it's stored. Um, OK, so now we are basically already set up. So I think I'll have to refresh here because we installed a new extension. So if I now click here, Connect Beacon, we can see that the extension pops up and it asks us, do you want to connect your account? Then we can give permissions, so like sign, giving permission to sign transactions, to send operation requests, and the threshold, which is currently not 100% specified. So we will leave this out. And when I click Confirm, I can see that my address has been shared with the DAP. So now if we scroll down a little, there is a, some explanation here how it works. We can see that we are now connected. We are connected on mainnet. There is a, this is our address. These are the permissions we have, and so on. So now I could, for example, um, send myself some funds here, uh, like a simple transfer. But this will prob probably produce an error simply because I will not. I do not have any funds on it because it's uh, an address that was just generated. So it gives me this um, error, and it's probably something we should make a little prettier. But yeah, good. So this is basically how um, the how it works if you have the extension installed, and it works pretty similarly to what you know from MetaMask. So as you could imagine now, if this was a casino page, they could actually use the address that we have synced to check your balance. Um, prepare some operations, and basically any kind of operation. Now, if you're a little more technical, you can send any kind of Tezos transaction here. So um, developers will notice that not ev every property is set. So for example, the counter um, and the gas limits, those are actually populated by the wallet. You just have to provide a, the important fields like the amount and the destination. Okay.
So now let's move on uh, and try it out what happens if we don't have the extension installed. So for this, oops, I have to cheat a little and go into the developer settings and remove the storage completely. So it's basically like um, if we came to the website for the first time. So we can really show how it works. OK, cool. So now there is no Chrome extension is installed. And we can, uh, I have to show my wallet here. When I click on Connect Beacon now, our SDK will automatically detect that there is no Chrome extension installed. So it will instead show us this QR code. Now, um, on the right side, you can see my mobile uh, app. So it's actually connected to my mobile phone. So I now can open the QR scanner and scan the QR. And after a short while, you can see that we are now connected. And as you can see, we get exactly the same screen as we got in the, um, in the extension before. So basically, it took the account that we have here locally in our mobile wallet. And we can, again, give the permissions here. I'll do the same thing, connect. Then it takes a little while. And as we can see, we have our address here. Um, maybe one thing to, to notice here, uh, this communication that we just saw is completely encrypted, of course, and it's um, working over a peer-to-peer -peer network. So for those of you familiar, it's the Matrix uh, protocol. So the Riot, or I think now it's called Element IO, chat is based on that. So we basically use their, um, their code to host these nodes. OK, so now that we are connected, if we scroll down here, we can see we have a different address. So now let's actually do a transaction. So I'm going, I'm going to send myself one test. I click on transfer. And then after a short while, we can see on my mobile wallet, I immediately get the request, an operation request. So here I can see the amount is one TESI, and th that's the fee. I can also check the other um, more technical details. Um, and if I agree, I click continue. Now, at this point, um, that's not really beacon related, but rather it's about our app. I have to quickly touch on um, our, our app so you understand what is happening here. So we, are, we have a, a mobile app called AirGap, and it's um, mainly focused on security. So the way we do that, this is by having two separate apps, the AirGap wallet, which you can see uh, at the moment, and the AirGap vault. And the vault contains the public key, uh, sorry, the private key, and it, the private key never leaves this device, uh, so, sorry, this app. So it, the private key never leaves the vault. Um, instead, if you have a request that you want to sign, you will open the vault. And if you have a two device setup, so like an air gap setup, you can scan the QR code. Or as we will see now, it will um, open the other app with app switching. So what the benefit of this is that the vault actually doesn't have internet access. So it can sign it completely offline. Um, yeah. You, so what we will see now is basically the same device approach. So if I click here on same device, it will switch over to the Vault app. I have to show my face here. And I can see the same request again. So this is, in a way, kind of like the ledger. So this, here you really have to, again, check if the details are correct, because you never know if, for example, the DAP tries to trick you and shows you the wrong information. And here it's really offline, and it shows exactly what is in the transaction. So here we whoops, we verify, verify that everything works. And then we sign it. And we send it back to the online part. And we can check once again and confirm. So, so now. Important to know, Andy, yeah. sorry to interrupt right here, mm -hmm. but uh, what you're demoing is the AirGap wallet product. Uh, yes. So if someone had linked, say, a Magma wallet product, they wouldn't need to go through the, the, the step that you just showed there of the vault verifying uh, yes. the transaction. Okay. Exactly. That's, that's actually a very good point. Thanks. I think I didn't make that clear. So this is completely our AirGap implementation. Uh, if, an, if you use any other wallet, um, the reason why I'm not showing any other wallets is because it's still brand new and uh, they're still working on it. Uh, so this is actually, at the moment, the only mobile wallet supporting Beacon. Uh, if you have Magma, for example, you would simply get the request in the Magma wallet, you click on Sign, and that's it. So you have only one button. And here, because of our secure setup, we have these extra steps to go to the other app. But this is uh, completely 
optional. And that's actually, uh, as mentioned before, kind of the power of Beacon because it really lets you choose your preferred wallet. Like our, um, ah, as we can see, we get the notification. We just received the transaction. I didn't even have time to open the Block Explorer. Like if we would, if I would open here, we would see the transaction went through. So, but to finish the thought from before, basically, if you want to have a very secure setup with air gap and have a two device approach where the vault is offline and air gapped on a separate device, you can use Beacon. If you want to use Magma and you prefer to have all um, to use that wallet, it also works with Beacon. That's like the beauty. You, you are not locked into a single wallet. Okay, good. So I think now we saw how a complete transaction worked. So basically now we're back uh, in the DAP. We have initiated the transaction here. A request was sent to the wa wallet. You sign it, it gets broadcasted. And then as soon as the blockchain includes it, you get the notification that it's done. So maybe um, now is time, the time to quickly talk about how this looks for to a developer. Like what do you as a developer have to do to make this integration? And for this, we quickly jump over to GitHub because actually the only piece of code that you need are those couple lines here. Because as you can see, you basically just create this DAP client instance and give it the name. This name is the one that shows up in the permission request. And then you just say, request permission. And when you do that, you actually get the permission request. And either after some seconds, you get the response that the user accepted it, or you get some kind of error. So this is actually all you have to add to your DAP to make this work. And then, of course, there is a similar uh, code snippet if you want to actually send a transaction. So you would just say a request operation. And here you pass in the operation. And that's it but it's really easy for users to integrate it. And that was actually the main focus um, when we built uh, the Beacon SDK, the simplicity to the, to the developers. Okay, good. So now I think we saw how um, the two approaches work. So um, to iterate again, you install one SDK and without having any kind of configuration, it figures out if it should use the extension or the the QR code approach. And now what I think is actually the, the most interesting thing is if you combine the two. So I'll quickly set this up and then we can check out some other dApps that are out there. So I'm going to install the extension once again. So I have to initialize it just like before. And now I'm going to he here to say pair wallet. And now we get the same QR as if I now scan this QR, we are actually connected to the extension. So now uh, our extension has a direct connection uh, to our wallet. And the, the cool thing about this is now you don't ever have to scan a QR code again when you browse uh, through different tabs. I mean, we can quickly see it here if I again refresh. Um, and click here, I get the request immediately. But I mean, now this doesn't look so uh, impressive because we saw it before. But now let's take a look at some other dApps. So for example, this is a, uh, one of the dApps built by um, Claude as a kind of showcase how to build uh, dApps on Tezos. So now here, let's actually quickly take our our address. I have to say here that this is actually the first time that I'm using it because I was afraid that if I actually use my address to get some funds, that it won't work during this demo. So fingers crossed that it will work. So now I click here. Oh, I think I forgot to refresh because you always have to refresh when you um, install an extension. Ah, yeah. And we can see out of the box without having any QR codes, to scan here, we the the page basically leverages the connection that already exists in the extension. So it talks to the extension and the extension relays it to our wallet that we connected beforehand. So now we see also that it is on CarthageNet. So again, we give the permissions and now we should probably be greeted with some kind of um, 
request exactly. So here we can inspect it and we can actually see uh, the parameters here. So it's a contract call with the entry point mint and the value, that's our address. So let's just again, go through the air gap process. Again, this is only for air gap, not uh, required in other wallets and we have broadcast it. So now, yeah, we basically have to wait to see what happens once it's included. And yeah, I mean, now we basically saw that within a matter of probably, without my explanations, it would have been maybe 30 seconds. We went on a new DAP, we used the existing connection to our wallet and we uh, did a like a, an operation request all within 30 seconds. And that is, in my opinion, the power that uh, Beacon brings to the table. Yeah, okay, so now we can see the transaction has been included. Um, I mean, that's, I guess we will only see what happened once we go here. Ah, yeah, and we can see we now have 100 tokens. To be honest, I'm not sure what kind of tokens they are. It's on testnet, but um, yeah, I think it's a pretty good showcase to see what, what is possible. And as you can see here, just to quickly touch on it, you could do exactly the same thing um, with TestBridge, which is kind of a browser-based wallet, and with Thanos. To be honest, I think this is kind of a, um, this is not necessary anymore, because if Thanos was installed and the Beacon extension was not, then if you clicked here, it would trigger the Thanos wallet as well. Simply because, as I mentioned before, it's not like a proprietary protocol just for us. It's, it's an open standard. Okay, so maybe, yeah, I think I can just quickly go through some of the use cases that are out there and dApps. So this dApp is also built by Claude and it's basically probably the same thing that we've seen before. So you can enter an amount here and then you will get some, some funds to the address that uh, you used in Beacon. I mean, should I try it or should we move on? Okay, so let's try it. Yeah, A lot it of, oh, yeah, let's, uh, it's, um, it's risky, but let's try it. <laughs> so let's get 100 tokens and we use Beacon again. Oh, my phone went to sleep. Okay, so we got a request from Minitest, again, without any QR scanning. We confirm it. Ah, now we see we are connected and we can buy it. Whoops, okay, so there is a, actually an error. This is now the, the actual er error that you get from the node. So you can see it's still early on and it's quite technical, but down here we can see that there was a wrong contract error. So this is actually, I mean, now we would have to talk to the contract developer what went wrong. So this doesn't work just now. Maybe it's like a, maybe I found a bug in his contract. <laughs> okay, so let's move on. Um, a lot of you might be familiar with uh, Better Call Dev, which is a smart contract block explorer by the Baking Bad guys. And they are now also in the process of integrating Beacon. So what we are seeing here is the development version. It's not live yet. Um, and we just took a, a random contract and we can now see on the right side, the entry points that this contract has. And we could um, set something here and then we could simulate, simulate it and we would see how the storage changes. And now, sadly, this doesn't work because it's it's not live yet, but here you could just click on Beacon and you would basically get the request just like we've seen before. So it's kind of like a playground where you can try out contracts uh, without building a UI. And once you know how the contract works, you can then start to actually hard code these calls and, and build a, a nice and beautiful UI. So I'm very excited for this to happen and then the last one is actually also not live yet. Um, I, this is our block explorer and I'm, I'm hosting it locally now. But um, what we will add here very soon is if you open a baker and we now opened our air gap baker, we have a, a button here that says delegate now. So as you can imagine, if I click this button, I will, ah, again, I have to reload the page. I always forget. If I click the button, 
I will get a request from test block. I have to confirm the permissions. And then shortly after that, ah, there will probably be an error. Oh, no. OK, interesting. Uh, because I think I'm already uh, I'm already, de already delegated to to us. Ah, but now I I aborted it by accident. Let's check the the extra details. So now we can see the kind is not a transaction, but rather a delegation. And yeah, those are the details. I mean, now we can go through the whole step again, but it's basically the same thing. Okay. So I actually so I th like to see the details there. So a novice oh. user may get confused with the details, but this is actually a good way to start learning what you're actually doing with the transaction or the delegation. Mm -hmm. You know, where is your source? Um, what kind of fee or gas limit is being used? Uh, so it's like almost like a good uh, building block, which you can learn, start learning what's exactly going on behind uh, the hood, so to say. Yeah, I, I agree. It's, uh, it's, I mean, for me as a developer, it's extremely helpful because you can already see if like, if the counter is wrong, you, you could find out what was going wrong. But as a new, uh, someone new to Tezos, he can see how the structure is of a, of a transaction. Yeah. Okay, so I think I am through with all the dApps. Oh, no, actually, we forgot the most important one, Dexter. So um, for those of you who don't know, Dexter is a decentralized exchange. They are also still in beta, but um, hopefully, fingers crossed, they will release very soon. And now here we quickly switch to CarthageNet because they are on CarthageNet. So now here, uh, again, I have to refresh. Um, we can click connect wallet and connect to beacon. And as we can see, they now have are using a custom network. They point to their own node, so we can connect. And we have granted permissions. And as you can see, we can now exchange Tezos. And you can see my balance here, just like um, it is on the mobile phone. And I can exchange it to some other tokens. I think yesterday to try it, I think those are moon tokens. I bought some of them, so let's buy even more because we all want it to go to the moon. So let's say for 10 Tezis, I'm going to buy 74 moon tokens. And if I click this button here, I should get a request that says, OK, the UI is, oh, could use a little work. But we can see again, it's a transaction. And the amount is specified. And then in here, we have some contract call details. Um, I, mean, I can't tell you exactly what's going on here, but looks good to me. So we go over to the vault again. We see it's the same details. We sign it, we go back to the online wallet, broadcast, and we should see it here momentarily. OK, cool. So now, again, we can check the block explorer and wait for it to be included. Yeah. So. I'm very excited for Dexter to launch. I think they're still working on some uh, some contract um, improvements. Yeah, but I think it should happen pretty soon. Is that an FA 1.2 standard token? Is that the only kind of tokens, Tezos-based tokens, that will exist on Dexter? Do we know, or is it? I to be honest, I don't know. I I think it's 1. FA 1.2 now, but they might also support. FA2 later, but don't quote me on that. I really don't know. But I mean, usually, of course, uh, they, they they try to include as much as they can. OK, so the transaction went through. Let's go back and check. And still shows the alt balance. Let's refresh. Uh, now you quickly have to click here again. Ah, yeah. And now we see we have 80 tokens. So yeah, um, there is there are more features here, but sadly, I can't really explain how they work. So you can add liquidity and remove liquidity to the pool. And basically, all the actions here that you're uh, going to take that involve sending funds from your wallet, they will uh, trigger a beacon request. And same thing will happen again. And yeah, I mean, just for the people to really understand the, the process of signing a transaction can be much, much simpler than it was now um, in Airgap. So it could really be only one button press if you use, for example, Magma or Galleon. So I, I guess this is also a good point um, uh, to talk about support for Beacon. So as I mentioned, um, Beacon or the TZ10 is actually an, 
supposed to be a standard throughout the Tezos ecosystem. And we already have um, a lot of participants like Thanos um, that are uh, that told us that they will integrate the standard. So Thanos were, they were the first ones to actually integ integrate it. But we also know that Galleon will support it and Magma will also try to integrate it. But the problem is at the moment, we only provide a uh, Beacon SDK in TypeScript and JavaScript. So you can use it uh, in the browser for dApps and browser-based wallets, which AirGap is, uh, but you cannot use it, for example, in a native um, app like what Magma is, for example. So Magma is um, waiting for us to release a Swift um, and Kotlin SDK that handles that. But once we do that, uh, I think they're also planning to integrate it. So I do believe that um, most wallets will support it, um, hopefully soon, rather sooner than later. Yeah, I think Excellent. that is it from the... Demo that's all, side. all for the demo. Well, that's that's yeah. extremely insightful to see this live in action, talking to the wallet and in, you know talking to the the DAP as well. And it's actually a pretty good showcase of some of the the DAPs that are in beta stage uh, with Tezos and what's coming down the pipeline as well. So mm -hmm. I th I think we yeah. do have some more. Oh, yep. Go ahead, Andy. I mean, I uh, I probably don't even I, I we can't imagine what kind of use cases people will come up with because we just uh, showed like on on test block this um, delegate now button, but just as well, you could have a website uh, integrate like a tip me button that you can uh, you can do like a, give him a little bit of money, just like an upvote, for example, or you could do voting, um, like off chain voting by signing a message using Beacon. Yeah, and maybe that's something I didn't touch on. Uh, there are actually, um, four kinds of requests you can do with Beacon. One we saw is the permission request. One is the operation request that covers contract calls and so on. And then one is a signing request, which basically gives you back a signature and you can then do with the signature what you want. So this would an allow you to do stuff like voting or maybe um, also kind of log in with your, with your key pair. And then the last one is a broadcast. So you can basically broadcast a signed transaction in a wallet. So yeah, that's just to, to cover it all. Those are the four things you can do. And the rest is up okay. to the, the wonderful developers to get creative yes. and start building with this. Mm -hmm. I mean, the operation request is the one that most people will use because you can do any kind of smart contract call with it. And so for the audience listening, this is another exciting part of the show. We're going to give you the keyword before we get into the last bit of topics that we'll touch on here. So uh, once you get the keyword, don't leave us, stay with us. We still have some more stuff to touch on. Uh, but the keyword, you guys are going to have to enter this into the YouTube chat and you'll be automatically entered for a chance uh, to win the night, uh, to win the Ledger Nano S engraved with the Tezos logo. And Will later will announce the winner. So the keyword is exclamation point. Beacon. That's the product that we're demoing here today. And it's spelled capital B E A C O N. So again, that's exclamation point beacon. So go ahead, enter that in the YouTube chat and we'll have the night bot calculate who's the winner and Will will announce that shortly. So Will, you can go ahead and start with these topics. I know Andy, we've already kind of touched on some of them. Uh, so if you want to give a brief answer, if we have already touched on them, we can just sort of roll through them as we go. Sure. Yeah. Uh, actually, before we get onto those topics, there's been quite a few questions asked from the audience. So let, let's try to touch on those real quick. Um, okay. One of the, I, I think the oldest question asked was from a user called Plavi. Uh, he asked, any plans on implementing Dexter on AirGap? Um, so I guess what he's talking about is similar to what Magma showcased, uh, mm -hmm. um, basically integrating it directly in the app. Um, it's not something that I would rule out completely, but at the moment we are more focused on the beacon integration because it basically allows you to do the same thing. It's just, I mean, I agree that integrating it into AirGap directly would um, be a, a little bit more usable, but I think for now we are we are uh, not planning to do that. So basically, we we will allow users to participate in the Dex in the Dexter DAP by using Beacon. 
right but this this means you'll have to have a desktop um, to connect to yeah that that makes complete sense um another question we have was from superboy again he asked how secure is beacon i mean ah, have that's... they go ah. ahead Continue. Okay, that's actually a great point, uh, and I didn't mention that. Uh, the Beacon version that is out there now is actually being uh, audited by a third-party company um, as we speak, and I'm well, I'm very confident that that they will not find anything uh, anything big. Uh, also, to to mention here, when you think about Beacon and security, Beacon is basically mainly a transport layer. So it just handles the communication from one end to the other. So basically, I would say the yeah, um, the attack surface is not that big, but we definitely want to make sure that, for example, not somebody is able to intercept the transaction and, and, uh, and kind of alter it in transit. Um, so that's what uh, those guys are currently trying to do. And to, yeah, if they find anything, we'll have some time to fix it. Yeah, and just going off on that, is there a timeline for when that audit will be complete? I think the timeline for like the first um, report back to us is in the middle of August, and then sure. we we have like a couple weeks to implement their feedback. So I would expect it maybe by the end of um, by the end of August or yeah, maybe a bit later. Okay, good stuff. Um, so. One of the other questions we had from the audience uh, was also from Plavi, uh, Plavi989. He asked, when is the next update for test block? Also, what kind of new features can we expect? Okay, so I'm not 100% familiar with what uh, features will be in there, but um, one of them we actually already saw, which is this uh, delegate now button. So this will be enabled on all bakers, not just AirGap. Um, that will definitely be in there. And regarding the the timeline, I think it should happen probably uh, early next week. Yes, but other than that, I'm I'm not sure which um, which features are in there. There Got will it. be again a blog post uh, covering all the all the features that are in the update. Gotcha. So our last question uh, that's been asked from the audience is from Rafael Lima. Uh, he asked, how do you suggest to store the client instance? Hmm. That's a, it, well, I guess it depends on what kind of architecture you use in your DAP. The, our SDK stores all the state in, in local storage. So you don't actually have to store it. You just have to like basically on uh, at runtime, you have to create an instance, and we will then, uh, when you when you create it, it will read the state from local storage. So, I mean, in theory, you could also recreate it on every button click, but I mean that doesn't make sense. So, I would just uh, I would suggest you create it once the page loads, or at least once you expect the user to interact with Beacon. You create it once, you store it. Um, I mean, storing it like you you keep it in memory for the rest of the time that the user is using the DAP, and then you just reuse the same client. But if he happens to refresh the page, then uh, it shouldn't actually be a problem because all the state gets loaded back. So uh, if that was the last question, I actually uh, forgot to mention one thing. Uh, I quickly touched on it before. Beacon is basically uh, tra the transport layer. So for, everybody, for all the DAP developers that are trying or that want to work with uh, with smart contracts and actually want to do complex smart contract calls more than just a simple spend, they would actually not get a lot of assistance from the Beacon SDK, but they would rather use Takito. So Takito is a very well-known uh, TypeScript library, and they integrated Beacon. So they have this uh, Beacon wallet package that you can download, and when you do that, it's for people who, who are familiar with it, you can uh, have, they have this contract API that allows you to call methods on a contract and then send it to some kind of signer. They have a similar API now, I think they released it about a month or two ago, 
um, that works with Beacon. So you instead of the contract API, it's called the wallet API. So you would use Takito to use their methods to access the entry points in a very usable way. And that would generate the transaction for you. And then internally, Takito uses Beacon and connects, uh, does all this connection that we've seen um, for you. So it's basically an abstraction layer that helps you interact with smart contracts. So most people who, who want to do more than a, just a simple button press that we see here or like a tipping functionality, they will most likely use Takito instead of the Beacon SDK directly. Yeah, that's a great point. And I think we've actually uh, covered all of the relevant topics that we wanted to, to ask. And I think now we're just going through and, and picking a winner for the amazing Ledger Nano S with the Tezos engraving. And if there's any other questions from the audience, feel free to get those in now uh, so we can ask Andy while we still got them here. Again, the security audit is ongoing. Nothing big has come up, nothing at all, really, and uh, that will finish soon. And I'm sure we can follow along uh, for updates as that, that finishes up as well. And Will, you want to go ahead and uh, announce the winner of the Ledger Nano S? Yeah, so it looks like Superboy is the winner. Um, he has quite a couple of really good questions. But uh, Superboy, you will need to uh, email social at tezoscommons.org. And uh, I believe uh, one of the mods is going to post that email here in the YouTube chat here shortly. And uh, we will need to have a screenshot uh, verifying your credentials so that we know it's actually your YouTube account. And Andy, before I go ahead and mention all your socials where people can follow you, uh, do you have any closing statements or comments? Well, um, it was very fun here talking about Beacon. Uh, I feel like every time I, I showcase it, I, I get excited again to see uh, how, I mean, how what it does and what it will do for hopefully to the Tezos ecosystem. So, and yeah, um, to all the listeners, I hope you give it a try. It's really easy. It's as you saw, it's just a couple lines of code, and you will you will get it working within a couple of minutes. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, then feel free to reach out. Absolutely. We're always happy to help. And you can find these guys on Twitter at PapersDev and at airgap underscore IT. They also have a Telegram channel, t.me backslash airgap. And as always, you guys can follow Tezos Commons on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. We have it all. And we actually just launched a very new website recently, tezoscommons.org backslash Tez Talks to get all the information on upcoming Tez Talks live and radio episodes. Be sure to check out that site. Otherwise, it was really fun talking to you, Andy. For myself, Ken, and for Will, until next time, guys, take care. Bye. See you.